Okay, humpback whales may have the most complex acoustics in the ocean. Uh, they certainly have more signaling than human language, the average human language. And they also had a, what might be called a global internet millions of years before humans did. They basically, the ones we studied are in Southeast Alaska, and that's where they make social calls and feeding calls. When they go to Hawaii, that's romantic. They're supposed to mate, and they sing songs. So there's uh, definitely uh, a difference between Alaskan vocalizations and Hawaiian vocalizations, as there would be between an average conversation in human and an average human song. There's all sorts of indications about how intelligent they are. And uh, anyway, here's what some of them sound like again. Now, there was a piece of song in there. You did hear a wee like that, and that was a piece of song. But mostly it doesn't sound like the songs you usually think of humpback whales as making because uh, these, are, these are chatting. These are social calls and discussions of things like bubble nets and how to fish. So we know humpback whales also make nets of bubbles to catch herring in. And usually if they want to not, if they don't make bubble nets, they just shovel like krill, which are a kind of shrimp, into their mouths with their long flippers. But they've developed a skill in Southeast Alaska, and I'm not sure where else in the world, uh, where they build nets of bubbles. And they basically shovel the, they chase the, uh, the herring into these nets and um, then they come up with their mouths open and eat them. I'll show you a net in a minute, but I want to show you a, uh, I want you to listen to what might be considered an argument in humpback whale. Sometimes the bubble nets fail, and there's this kind of chatter argument, which if I wanted to anthropocentize, anthropocentric eyes, uh, this observation, it would be, that they're arguing, I was there, where were you? See what you think. So it doesn't sound very romantic, does it? So here's an example of bubble nets. Uh, on the right is an illustration. And from the air, the diameter of those spiraling bubble nets are about 100 feet. And they catch herring in them. And we've tried reproducing a bubble net in miniature. And it's very difficult. The idea, we just don't have the technological intuition that they have whether it's Boyle's Law, which has to do with gas bubbles and expanding, or Bernoulli principle, uh, buoyancy, and you just have to have a lot of technical knowledge to catch fish in a net of bubbles. Listen to this. So we heard that one day, and it was the tempo and frequency range of human. And I thought of trying to make uh, talk to each other underwater when we were kids, and that's what it sounded like. It was a basically an attempt by the humpback whales, I think, to communicate in human. Uh, that's, uh, of course, an overinterpretation, maybe, but it sure sounded like they were attempting to make human-like sounds. What you just heard was a humpback sound. Uh, so what we want is their language, not ours. So the first 
thing was to say everybody quit talking so much in the boat. But um, I think that was an attempt of a non-human to communicate inhuman to us. Not that far from SETI when you think about it. Okay, and here is an example of uh, a bubble net coming up with us nearby taking pictures. And um, this is a feeding call again by a humpback that we nicknamed Miles after Miles Davis, the trumpeter. See what you think. If I were a herring, I would run from that. But it turns out that the humpbacks make this sound that is in resonance with the body of the herring. So they don't have much choice at all. They're going to be scared into the net by, by the humpbacks. And they've been doing this for millions of years, we think. Here's an example of a bubble net movie. Then we have to take pictures of their tail flukes because that's how you identify individual humpback whales. There we go. That's the ID. So just looking at them from there, you go, well, they're pretty alien, aren't they? They grew up on the same planet around the same star, and they have a global communication system, and their, socially network, their social network is complex, and they use tools, and in every other way, they're very intelligent. We can't put it down to their non-intelligence that we haven't communicated with them. I would put it down to our kind of anthropocentric viewpoint of our own communication system, but we're working on it. So here's an example of an intelligence filter. The outline, Russian letters, English letters, Arabic letters, Russian phonemes, dolphin whistles, humpback whale social and feeding calls all land within what we call the intelligence filter. If we got an extraterrestrial signal and it landed in this box, that would be news. That would be really interesting. Uh, unfortunately, squirrel monkey calls, ground squirrel calls, and so on, as well as... Uh, humpback whale and bird song fall outside the intelligence filter, but elephant rumbles fall in it. So we're working with different increasing species to see who lands in the intelligence filter. So the results are we can distinguish astrophysics from an intelligent extraterrestrial signal. We, uh, we know that other socially complex species obey the rules of information theory even an extraterrestrial system would have to obey the rules of information theory in order for knowledge transfer to take place. And that's an important point. You, they cannot get around what information theory measures. They would have to, their communication system would have to obey information theory. So we're beginning to apply this to uh, any kind of message signaling uh, that is obtained from the Allen Telescope Array. Eventually, the terrestrial application would be to be able to quantify uh, different species' ability to make syntax out of their communication system. And we think they'd maximize this because of the error recovery benefits. If we get an extraterrestrial signal, some anthropologists have said that uh, human complexity, human cultural complexity, led to human vocal complexity. So that if we measure the communication complexity of an extraterrestrial signal, we might also be able to obtain, at the same time, be obtaining their social complexity. So it's kind of a neat idea to measure the social complexity mathematically of an extraterrestrial civilization. So should we look up at the sky and say, are we alone? No, I think we should 
Well, that's all very romantic and stuff, but we should be paying attention to the non-human communication systems on, Mar on Earth. We have millions to, uh, to learn from.